For this tutorial, I'm going to use a demo e-commerce shop to demonstrate how to set up a goal within Google Analytics to track purchases in your shop. Once it's set up, you'll be able to view the conversions for that goal within Google Analytics and cross-reference it with other data. So we'll look at that too. To start with, Log into Google Analytics and you'll get to this page, the home page, and then navigate to the admin menu at the bottom left. Click admin. It brings you to this page. Make sure the property in the middle is the correct property for your store. And then on the far right column, go down to goals and click on goals. The goal right here that's already set up is a duplicate of what I'm about to set up and show you other than the fact that this one currently does not have a goal funnel set up. A goal funnel is a good thing to get set up, especially for an e-commerce store. It'll help you track when people are dropping off during the checkout process without completing it. So once I get both of these set up, I'll be able to show you what it looks like with a funnel versus without a funnel. So the next step is just to click new goal. Then click checkout complete. You can leave the rest the same and click continue. For the name of the goal, you can title that whatever you want. I'm going to call this one Checkout Complete with Funnel. And then you want to leave this set as destination. So this goal is going to be based on when people land on your thank you page after completing a checkout in order to count it as a conversion. Click Continue. The next step is to get the URL for your thank you page. In order to do that, you can either navigate through the back end of your website and find it, or you can create a test product for $0 and go through the checkout process to figure out the URL for your thank you page. Along with the thank you page, while you're doing this step, for the funnel, you're going to need two other URLs. You're going to need the URL for your cart page, and you're going to need the URL for your checkout page. So you need a total of three URLs to set this up. Your cart page, your checkout page, and your thank you page. So first, the actual goal completion URL is the thank you page. I have tabs open for each of these. Here's my thank you page. And I'm using WooCommerce on this demo site. And with WooCommerce, what it does is just appends tracking data at the end of the thank you URL. You don't want that. And you also don't want to include the domain. So you just get the part that starts after the domain. And since there's custom data and a custom string at the end of the URL. You don't include that and I'll show you a workaround. So I copy that and I paste that in there and instead of saying equals to, I change that to begins with. If your thank you URL is always the same and there's no trailing string on the end, you don't have to select begins with, you can just keep it as equals to. If you want to select a value, you can turn that on and you can put in an average price for your items, or you can just leave it off. You may already have ways to track the values of your conversions. The funnel for this one, again, we're going to turn it on. And we want to track in the goal funnel when people are going to your cart page and from there to your checkout page. And then from there to the thank you page. So we're going to start with cart. And then you just need the URL. 
And again, if you look at the example from Google right here, it explains that you don't need the domain. So for the cart, I just copy that part. Go back to here and paste it. Then you click add another step. And that's going to be the checkout page. So then go back here. Copy that URL. And paste it. If you want to make this goal funnel required, you can. It's up to you. I'm going to leave it not required. Um, one reason you might make it required is if you're having data that looks inflated. Sometimes if, if there's a PayPal checkout, it'll send them to PayPal to check out. And then PayPal will redirect them back to the thank you page. And I've seen where occasionally that might count it as two conversions where really it's only one. And you could turn required on to require that they start at your cart page and checkout page and then reach your thank you page. But for most purposes, you can leave it off and it'll be fine. In your case, you can click verify this goal and it'll tell you how many times the goal has been completed in the past seven days. For this shop, it's just a demo shop, so it's not going to tell us anything. In order to make sure it's recording, I'm just going to do some test purchases and be able to track and see an example of how it works. So once you get everything set up, you click Save. And there we go. Now we have both goals set up. The checkout complete, which is everything I just did minus the funnel. And then the checkout complete with funnel, which is going to show you how the goal funnel works. Alright, so here we are back in the Google Analytics dashboard. And I had to wait about, let's say about six hours and came back and checked. I checked periodically throughout, but now I see that the conversions were tracked. They came through, so everything worked. And to look at it, you just go under conversions in your Google Analytics dashboard. Go down, you can look at the overview. And so here's the two completions that were recorded. And then I can go look at the funnel and this is, again, this is just for the one I set up with the funnel visualization. visualization. And here's the advantage to using that. So here's goal one, checkout complete. We didn't set up a funnel there, so that's what we get. We just get the landing page. It tracked the goal. Now if I go to... Goal 2, check out complete with funnel. We get a visualization. So this is one thing, let me explain first. There's actually two um, traffic sources coming through here. And what it's counting as this conversion is where I went straight to that URL. I just pasted it in my browser and went to it to make sure the goal was working, which would really never happen. But if you look at this other one, I intentionally acted as if I was looking at my cart and then going to the checkout and then leaving without ever checking out. And this represents that. So if you want, you can imagine there's two in here and one of them went all the way through and checked out. Again, the reason it doesn't show two there is because this entrance, I just pasted the URL in my browser. But the one that did not complete purchase tells us right here that on the checkout page, that person left. So if you had an e-commerce store and you were seeing a lot of this, you could go set your time span for a month or a year or whatever you want. Maybe your peak season, something like that. And you could break it down and see how many people were leaving 
on your checkout page or how many people are leaving on your cart page. Then you could go try and make improvements to those pages to increase the conversion. And you could come back a month later and look and see if your stats have increased on that or not. You could even put other pages into the funnel if you want, such as landing pages and so on. You probably wouldn't want to make those required. Again, on here when I set up the funnel, nothing was required. So this, as long as they get to the checkout page, it counts as a goal. But it kind of backtracks and tells me some of the story. Another thing you can do in your goals overview is if you're looking at the page, you can go to source medium. And that's going to tell that obviously is direct traffic because I was pasting the URL in there. But it'll tell you if it's, you know, what source the traffic's coming from, how they got there. And then you can also do. If you click on the goal and view it in here, either one, you can go in and you can cross-reference it with secondary dimensions, time, date, month, and so on. You can look at the previous steps, which again here I just pasted it right in. Another thing you can do is if you're looking at your behavior reports or your acquisition reports, you can be looking at your traffic, for example. And if you're looking at the source medium or any of these analytics within Google Analytics, you can see where the goals converted. So if there was... Let's put in a month there just to backtrack it a little bit. So if you have all these sources, Google, Bing, and on a live, more active site, you would have a bunch. And you could tell what sources your goal came from. You could go to really any of these metrics here. Audience overview, demographics, geographics. You could go to location and you could look at what country okay we got that goal tracked from the US you can click on US and narrow it down by state and you can keep on going you can click Kentucky if you wanna narrow it down by city and that's me that's Louisville so that's just a general overview get involved with Google Analytics or contact us and we can help you out with this we can set up more advanced and more detailed tracking metrics and help you out with this but we hope this video gave you an idea of some easy ways to set up some goal tracking and get started thank you for watching and have an awesome day